You're listening to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rusnak. Virtuosi Concerts return this weekend with a season opening celebratory and sultry pairing of Cameron Crosman on the cello and Philip Chu at the piano. Ahead of the performance, I'm so excited to welcome both Cameron and Philip back to Winnipeg's Classic 107 for a chat. Hello to you both. Hello. Hello, Simon. Oh, hey, Cameron. Nice to see you. <laughs> Hello, Phil. Long time no see. Long time no see. <laughs> yeah, what are, what are the chances you would both happen to be joining me uh, here on a radio station? And uh, you've both been guests at the station before, though though not together, uh, right, Cameron? Sunday will be your first performance as a, as a duo here in, in Winnipeg? That's right, yeah. And what a treat for us here in town. Uh, I know that you guys have performed together um, plenty in, in Montreal. And uh, Phil, it is... It is there that we last saw each other uh, when I was in peak tourist mode with my wife walking out of Schwartz's Deli, That's... and I, I literally almost walked into you. <laughs> That's because I was probably coming back from the gym. Uh, no, uh, yeah, that was so. That was. Uh, it took me a moment. I was like, you know, you see faces, and you go, uh, like, I know, I know who you are, and like, you know. But when worlds collide, you don't yeah. expect to see someone from however many kilometers away, then yeah, it was a bit of a surprise. It was good to see you. Hope you had a good yeah. time. Well, no kidding. And excited to see you here in Winnipeg. And the reason why I was so excited and, and interrupted you with your headphones on, uh, I imagine you were listening to uh, Cavatine or something like that, your, your dis yes. first disc with Cameron. Yeah. Um, you know, the reason why I was so excited to see you is you're a bit of a big deal in the classical music world. I mean, you've collaborated with the likes of the Chewy Brothers and, and your group, the trio uh, Canoe, or I should say Canoe, um, here in Winnipeg. You performed alongside James Ennis and Emmanuel Pau and Jonathan Crow. The list goes on. Tell us about how you and Cameron first came to perform together as a, as a duo. Well, I mean, I think actually the first time I played with Cameron, wait, Cameron, was it for your Canada Council audition? I, no, I'm very, it was before. I'm right. It was before. It was in London the first time with on the concert with Timothy Chewy. That was the first time, right. So I grew up, a, a part of my life was in London, Ontario, and same for Cameron. And so there's a wonderful concert series there, the Jeffrey, Jeffrey concert series, um, who in their, in their moment of genius sort of uh, decided to, to, to put us together along with Timmy Chewy that you mentioned. Um, so we played some trios and, and uh, some sonatas on that program, if I remember correctly. And I remember really enjoying my time with Cameron. And then not too much longer later, he asked me if I would just play for him for his Canada Council Instrument Bank uh, audition one of the many that he's won. I think that's the one that he got the bonjour, if I remember correctly. That's right. Yeah. Uh, now he has some other fancy Spanish cello. Um, but yeah, it just over time, you know, I think Cameron's probably one of the people actually I've played with the longest in my life. And it is one of the most rewarding uh, partnerships that I have. You know, we, we mentioned Emmanuel and all these others, and they're great. And it's, it is always inspiring to play with them. But but building something with someone over over longer time, you know, you develop a kind of a trust like Cameron and I in our rehearsals. And I sometimes we make a joke of this, but in a way, it's so nice to be able to just talk about things and no one takes things uh, personally. You know, we can just say stuff, but at the same time, we, there's so little we have to say. I'll just go, hey, Cameron, bar 25, and he'll go, oh, yeah, sorry, boom, 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 let's just do that again. You know, we just name bars, basically, and, and we already kind of know, we, we trust in the other, oh, you had a great idea, I just happened to miss that, but it goes by so fast, and it, it's really so rewarding. Um, so, you know, yeah. As you say, the partnership's been a very fruitful one. Uh, lots of live performances, virtual ones. We've all gotten used to those. And uh, not one, but but two CDs. Um, I, I am curious, before we kind of get to this, this program, um, Phil, you mentioned the, 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 the instrument bank and, and the instruments that, that Cameron has performed on. Cameron, I, I'm curious when, when this partnership started, um, you, you know, you're, you're playing on the, the Bonjour cello for a while, the, the Stradivarius, um, named for, a, I think, a, a Parisian cellist who played it for a while. It was French. That's right, yeah. And then, and then you released... Uh, an album of French music, and then you change cellos, you go to a Spanish uh, <laughs> instrument that is the shark, and then you release a, a Spanish album to Peo. Is, is that how you two program things that, that based on the cello you perform on? <laughs> Definitely, it's, it's funny that it worked out that way. To be completely honest, the although one might suspect that the French album had to do with the cello, it didn't. It had more to do with the fact that I spent uh, six years studying in France, and I sort of felt like it was, I, I'd immersed myself so much in the culture. It was a culture that I'd really grown to know and love. And it just felt natural that the first CD uh, would be of, of French music. But I must say, Phil is, is, is <laughs> one of the things that's so fun about working with Phil is, is I bring him the, these ideas, these crazy ideas, like for our last disc to pay where I'm like, Phil, I want to do like this Spanish program because I have a Spanish cello and I want it to be like musical tapas. And then <laughs> here's a whole bunch of pieces we've never played before. Do you want to play them? <laughs> And Phil that's is always great. so game for everything. And that's really been awesome. That's because I have trust in Cameron. That's because I trust Cameron. Cameron, you should know, is someone who 
who does Im immense amounts of research. He falls in love with a, with a concept or an idea or has a something something sort of sparks, then he dives down the rabbit hole. I mean, really <laughs> deep down. Um, so much that he comes out the other side. And if he, if he really discovers something worthwhile and, and, and interesting about it, he will he'll bring that back. And it's so when he brings ideas, they're never just sort of like this. You don't know, they're, it's not just a rough draft of something silly. It's always well thought out. And so he he's definitely proven that he more than deserves just uh, the accompaniment, just the yes, I'll join you on this on this crazy journey. Uh, if you're Thank just you. it wasn't in. always like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, uh, if, if you're just tuning in, uh, my name is Simon Rusnick. I'm chatting with uh, pianist Philip Chu and, and cellist Cameron Crosman, who will be here in Winnipeg performing uh, in the first Virtuosi concert of the 2021-2022 season. And uh, Cameron, um, you know, we were just talking about the, the various discs, the two discs mm -hmm. that you two have recorded, and, and Tapeo, which takes its name from, from the tradition, the act of going for, for tapas. And uh, you've prepared a sort of musical tasting menu of Spanish Spanish-inspired and Hispanic American composers uh, for, for this program. H how did you decide what to play for the Winnipeg audience? Did you re-listen to that disc or did you already have an idea in mind of, of what you wanted to perform? Yeah, well, one of the great things about Tepeo, as, as Phil and I have found, especially uh, as we sort of played the program more and as we've decided, well, maybe we won't just play exactly what on the CD over and over again. <laughs> What's great is that we can sort of change it up between the concerts, everything, because it's short pieces, because it is this tasty menu, we can pick and choose. And, and so we try to choose sort of different things now, I think, for, for, for our tapas that we present to each audience. And in the first half of the program, we're actually doing something a little bit different. Uh, we just did, but still Spanish inspired. We just did a concert here in Montreal, paying homage to the great Catalan Spanish cellist Pablo Casals, who actually came to Montreal multiple times back in the 20s. And I found his concert programs. Another example of going down the rabbit hole, found his <laughs> concert program, said to Phil, what if we played some music? He knows where they played, what he played, what he <laughs> ate, where he slept. You know, that's the Cameron special. And so the first two pieces on our program, which are a little bit more substantial, will be taken from the repertoire that Casals played here in Canada. And then we'll go into our, our tapas for our sort of little, uh, you know, party afterwards. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about what uh, Casals played in, in Montreal? Yeah, so the two selections we have, uh, the first is a sonata by Bach. Uh, of course, Casals is very well known for, for having really sort of, uh, if not rediscovered Bach's music for cello, at least started playing it a lot more in public. And so on almost all of his programs, he would either play a Bach solo suite or one of the sonatas for viola da gamba and harpsichord arranged for cello and piano, which is what we'll be doing. And the second piece is much more surprising, actually. It was a piece written for Casals by a very somewhat obscure uh, French composer from the early 20th century named Jean Huret, uh, who was mostly an organist, but, but wrote a lot of chamber music, actually wrote a lot for cello, surprisingly. Uh, three cellos not as one of which was dedicated to Casals, the one we'll play, which is sort of this, this phenomenally epic and, and surprising piece of music that goes on this entire journey. It's in one movement and it, it really sort of covers all sorts of emotions and characters. Yeah, it sounds marvelous. I listened to the uh, pre-show chat that, that the two of you gave with uh, interim artistic director of Virtuosi Madeline Hildebrand. And, and Phil, that, that work of Ure, is, is, is that his name? Not to be That's confused right. with Ure. Jean. Jean-Joseph Mouret, the guy who wrote the, you know, masterpiece theater tune, uh, not actually for that. But anyway, uh, you know, Phil, can you tell us a little bit more about working with Cameron on this program? And I mean, just how symphonic that work is and then how you go from, from that to these sort of Spanish tastings and, 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 and the rest of the program. Well, yeah, that's a great question, Simon. You always ask such great questions. Thanks, um, I try. <laughs> they should they should hire you for this you know just anyway just the note to classic 107 um i mean you know i think one of the challenges of, of doing duo programs when it comes to piano and some other instrument is that you can easily fall into a, a trap of um of music that doesn't always uh, feel like a duo you know and and that doesn't mean it's not great music it just means that not always like all musicians are, are sort of equally vested or have the same kinds of challenges um, and that also sometimes means sonically, like just for the audience experience, they kind of hear a certain certain kind of textures that remain off in the same. And Cameron and I work really hard to to create experiences for audiences that are that really run the gamut as much as we can, whatever the given time length. And so, you know, when we think about these these Spanish pieces, the nature of them are such that um, the majority of them. I mean, I think the cello has these melodic lines. They 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 it it it, it has prominence, which is as I said, in and of itself, not a bad thing. But we just want to make sure that we, we chose works that also show showcase more, showcase other aspects. And so the Jean Huret 
Cameron's choice, not mine, is this epic thing. I like to think it's actually practically a concerto for for, uh, for cello, but at the same time, the piano part is massive. Um, so much so that I told Cameron he, he should, because he loves to do arrangements, um, should do an arrangement of this for orchestra, because the piano writing, almost like an organist writing for, like you can imagine, César Franck, um, the Belgian mm-hmm. composer, who also wrote big piano parts. It, it's just massive. He imagined like a double piano sort of stacked on top of each other. He's calling for three, four forte, fortes at a time. Just enormous sounds and thickness and and a, and a just a, a breadth that is that actually took quite some time. I was laughing at a lot of the time during our rehearsal with Cameron because I was just like, what does he want me to do here? It was almost comical because it, the, it was such outsized, such epic proportions. Um, but now I like to think we found our way to have it all make sense. <laughs> it is true though, during the first rehearsal, because I, I, because it wasn't a piece, I think it only even had one recording, one sort of like sketchy recording that was done. And and it's just sort of like, so you, so you, you start playing this piece, you, we're working together and, and we're, there are moments where we are laughing. We're like, this is, this is crazy. Like, what is he trying to do here? This is so over the top. But then you start to internalize it and it's, so it's, it's really fun to actually, in a way, it's these type of emotions we almost never get to play as classical music, where it is this over-the-top drama that would that would be considered silly in so many scenarios. But here, it's taken totally seriously, and it's cool. Yeah. Well, how marvelous. And it is going to fill um, St. Andrew's United Church, um, a new venue to virtuosi, I, I should say. And and that complemented by this sort of musical Spanish breeze, which will be well suited here in Winnipeg, where winter winds have returned. It's blustery. It's 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 it's, it's winter in Winnipeg. Uh, so I, I think it's very much appreciated. Um, just before I let you both go, uh, Cameron, I, I am curious, you know, the night before virtuosi, you'll be performing with the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra, the Elgar Concerto, which isn't an easy feat at the best of times, let alone back-to-back days of concertizing coming out of a pandemic where concerts and performances really just didn't happen. You know, I know you did a lot of this in the before times, um, but that was the before times. How are you feeling about that now? Do you have to get back into a mindset? Is it like a, a marathon runner? That's kind of what I'm picturing. You can't just kind of go cold turkey into running 26 miles, right? Totally. Yeah. No, it's been very interesting. And actually on top of, of the, the, the two concerts in Winnipeg, I just played a, a concert of clarinet trios this past weekend. And four days after I get back, I'm playing a recital with accordion here in Montreal. So it really felt like everything sort of fell all at once. Uh, and yeah, definitely there's, there's, there's this idea of like working up to it. I think what's been, been sort of interesting to experience all over again is in the before times, as you said, you, you get used to this pace, you get used to, to sort of running and to, to sort of understanding that maybe you don't have a whole lot of time to practice and you need to have your mind in a whole bunch of different pieces all at once. And then we had a year and a half where there was only time to practice and not much else to do. And so it's also just, for me, I find it's a lot of sort of telling myself it's okay. Like, I don't need to feel like I need, you know, a month to prepare for a concert, like what we had and during the pandemic that that I've done this before and and it'll be it'll be fine so uh and it's feeling good to get back into it well we're excited to have you back now that you can travel back to Winnipeg and both coming together to perform on on Sunday to kick off the virtuosi concert season uh Phil Cameron thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me at Classic 107 today thanks so much thank you always great to chat with you